This video is powered by USA Gundam. Visit usagundamstore.com today for all of your gunpla and hobby needs. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a quick review on the SMS Hyperchrome pens. As you can see here, it comes in gold and in chrome. And uh, we're going to be taking a quick look at it using a little spare part that I have and show them off. So with all that said and done, let's get to it. So taking a quick look real quick at the packaging that these come in, I say packaging, uh, it's just this uh, plastic wrapping that comes around the markers that lets you know that they are fresh markers and that they have not been used or anything like that. So it is a nice touch that they actually come wrapped like this. Now they do come in two different sizes. This is the larger size here and it comes in a much smaller size here and you'll see the difference in the tips here in a little bit. So with the wrapping off, now you can see it a little bit better. Of course, you have hyperchrome detailing paint markers decked out in that chrome kind of text there, which is really nice since these are chrome pins. Of course, this is SMS, uh, the scale model supply. And on the back side, I'm gonna take a look at this one because it's probably easier to see. It does have instructions. They all say the same thing, so uh, don't worry about that. And of course, this is the three millimeter. And as I said before, this one's a smaller one at a 0.5 millimeter. But as you can see here, it says shake well before use, depress nib until paint begins to flow like basically any other paint marker, pump nib when required for more paint, and then leave 24 hours to fully cure and clear coat with water-based clears only. If you use a lacquer-based clear over top of this, it will turn dull or it'll turn, this one will probably turn just gold still, but it won't be as metallic looking. The chrome, as I have noticed in the past with other chrome pens, and I'm sure this is the same, is if you put a lacquer-based chrome over top of it, it will unsettle the surface of this pen and turn it silver. So it will no longer be chromey, it'll be silver. Now this little piece here came from the real grade Xeong and I, for some reason the Xeong comes with an extra thruster. I don't know why but it comes with enough parts to make an extra thruster which will work out perfectly for this. All right, so starting off with the chrome, uh, gold chrome pin here. As you can see, this is the 0.5 uh, tip and it's very, very fine, very small, very good for small details, which with gold, generally, I, you know, that's about the only thing I would use like gold for is like little piping details or something like that. But if we can zoom in here on this, you can be able to see, it says to depress it to get the paint flowing. And I'm just using a spoon just because uh, it's handy and around, but basically you want to press it down until the paint starts flowing. This could take a little bit for it to actually start doing anything, especially the first time ever. I just opened these. All right, so after some pressing, now the first time it will take quite a bit of time for it to actually start, but as you can see, it is now flowing with gold paint. And as you can see there, it is very reflective gold. Now, I will say that this, um, the, the gold isn't actually chrome. It's a very reflective gold, but it's not actual chrome. It says hyperchrome, and that's just because it's, you know, it's the same style as this one, but the other one is actually chrome. This one is, of course, gold. But getting in here, as you can see, it's very easy just to get into those really small little details. Now, this is just a demonstration. I'm not gonna worry about being like super, super precise or anything like that with this. But I did want to show just how easy it is, even on bare plastic, because this is just bare plastic. There's nothing painted on this kit, or there's nothing painted on these pieces, nothing like that. And you can just get in here and pick out details super, super easy with this because of the fine tip 
and you know the precision that a fine tip gives you so as you can see there with very minimal effort i was able to add a lot of detail to this piece just with a stroke of a pen and that is really really nice as you can see very reflective if you let that sit for 24 hours and come back it will be you know there forever it's very very hard to get this stuff off that being said it is very hard to get this stuff off whenever it's cured so you know if you do make a mistake you might want to get it cleaned up pretty quickly because once it's on it is on i'm gonna go to the other side i think there's another one here yep there is and uh we're just gonna detail this side up and as you can see i mean the paint flows really easily you don't really have to pump it too many times i haven't pumped it again since i started it and get in here and get on right there and voila we have detail picked out makes a world's difference i mean you can even get in here and pick out the little divots up here or little rivets or whatever they are just to show it off i'll paint this little piece in here just to show you how easy this is i mean it's so easy you literally just you paint with a marker you just draw on the part and it becomes chrome metal gold it's awesome <laughs> voila just like that bam reflective adds a lot of pop and flair to your piece crazy all right so i'm coming back again with the 0.5 here starting with the chrome because i kind of want to do these little uh they look like pistons right here so i think that'd be kind of cool to deck these pistons out in some chrome and just like the gold you just get in there and start basically coloring the chrome in and it will self-level out after a while um that's why that's part of the 24 hour curing process is it does kind of self-level a bit and you know becomes really nice and flat and chromey and we have now some chrome pistons if this thing will focus <laughs> yep as you can see, chrome pistons, really nice chrome pistons. And in 24 hours, like I said, you'll see that when it's cured, it will be very, very nice and chrome. And just to show this, I there has been literally no time between me doing this gold and this chrome here. And I can already wipe my finger over the gold areas like this up here and it's dry. I mean, the gold really dries to the touch pretty quick. I mean, I still wouldn't touch it. Uh, I would let it cure the whole 24 hours before really messing with the stuff. If I haven't said it already, these are alcohol based. So they are safe on bare plastic. It's not going to like eat the plastic or anything like that, like lacquer based stuff would. So, you know, for people that like to add detail to their kits without, um, you know, having to paint their kits. Some people just like snap building, panel lining, and adding some detail. These are perfect because as you can see, this is just a regular plastic piece. And already just with like four, don't mind up here. I was just doing that out of like, just showing this off, but like picking these two pieces off in gold and then picking those off in chrome for the pistons has already changed the appearance of this piece immensely. Now I've already shaken this pin up quite a bit, but I haven't actually done anything with the nib yet. And I just wanted to show you the difference between a 0.5 and a three millimeter nib. I mean, this is a big, big tip on this, uh, this marker here. Uh, so let's uh, take this big marker and get crazy with it and actually do the thruster bell with, uh, with Chrome. So just to make this easier on myself, I did remove the piece uh, just to, make this as pretty as possible, I guess you could say, but literally we're just gonna get in here, make some passes over this piece. And like I said, it will self level out. So don't worry if it like looks a little bit streaky at first because you know, you're, you're essentially just 
painting over the surface and waiting 24 hours for it to cure up and we'll see what it looks like after it does. I mean, already you can tell that it's chrome. That is, I mean, it's so easy. There's nothing to it. Literally, you just paint it on like you're drawing on a piece of paper with a marker. All right, so a quick pass over the bare plastic here. And as you can see, it's already really chromey. Uh, it's super, super reflective and dramatically different <laughs> from the bare plastic as it once was. And it really does have a nice chrome effect to it, but we're going to let it sit for 24 hours and come back and see what it looks like then. So like I was saying earlier about cleaning this stuff up, you want to clean it up before it actually cures. And since it's alcohol based, what we have here is some 99% isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip. And you can just come in here and simply wipe away any that you didn't want to be there. Just make sure that you do it in a timely manner because if you let it sit and actually cure, it will be a lot harder to get off. But as you can see, as long as you come back within a reasonable amount of time, you can clean it right off. So 24 hours later, it is the next morning and here is the part. As you can see, I am handling it with my bare hands. Uh, everything seems to be very durable. As I said before, this stuff is actually really hard to get off uh, once it's on there. You could top coat, but like I said in the beginning, uh, top coating with water-based um, top coats and not lacquer because you will not have this same chrome effect. As you can see in the, the bell there, you can see my reflection, my finger reflection in that. As you can see here, here's a nice angle here. You can see just how mirror chrome that stuff is. You could always go over it with more passes. I would definitely let it have its full curing time before going over with a second layer. Uh, because what I have noticed in little trials and stuff is if you go over it uh, while it's still curing, it really messes with the finish. So go over it one time. If it's not perfect or what you want, just wait the 24 hours and then go over it a second time. This is just one pass and it I think it turned out really, really cool. The gold, as you can see, still has that really nice reflective quality to it. As you can see at that top with the light bouncing off of it up there, that is really nice. I really like the gold. I like the chrome, but I really like that gold. And here's the chrome pistons here, which honestly is the majority of what I would use these for is for piston details and smaller chrome details like that. Um, I have seen people use them for uh, like rims and stuff on model cars and in, in like little uh, details on model cars like bumpers and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's really good for chrome. And also, like I said, the gold is really good for picking out little details. As you can see, I went back and like took a little bit more time with putting those rivets on there with the gold and it just... It, you know, it just adds so much more as before this was all just this was blue <laughs> Oh, yeah, and here's the gold in the middle there, but this was just blue and all of this was just gray and now with just a couple strokes of a pen it is a whole new part and you know if, if you did this on an unpainted kit it would just make it stand out a whole lot so there you go all right, guys, that's going to do it for this little quick review of the Hyperchrome pens. These things are really, really fun. Uh, they're really fun to use. Uh, I've kind of found myself trying to like find things just to color with them uh, then see what happens. <laughs> and so they're really, really cool. The finish on them is really, really nice and they're super easy to use. Uh, you literally just draw on the part. You can use them on painted parts. I just chose to use a spare part and show off how easy it was to use on bare plastic because that's also another cool thing is you can use them on bare plastic and it won't hurt the plastic. 
Uh, it's easy to remove as long as you remove it in a timely manner with some isopropyl alcohol. So, you know, if you make a mistake, you just wipe it off and do it again. So these things are really, really fun. And I highly suggest anyone that wants to add a lot of flair to their kit or just add even that more depth detail to their painted kits. Or if you're into car models, that's probably a big thing. But, you know, I highly suggest them. So if you want to get them for your own, I'll put a link in the description below where you can find yours. So that's going to do it, guys. And as always, a like and subscribe would be appreciated if you enjoyed this. And I will see you in the next one.